Castlevania started out as a simple monster mash, with you the player travelling through levels, defeating many infamous movie monsters, such as Frankenstein's monster, the Wolfman, and eventually Dracula himself. The first Castlevania game developed by Konami was released in 1986 for the Nintendo Entertainment System. It started the series out as a tough action platformer, starring the hero Simon Belmont and his signature weapon, the Vampire Killer Whip, as he goes on a quest to take down the Vampire Lord, Count Dracula. The same year, Konami released a port of Castlevania to the MSX2 named Vampire Killer. This version of the game introduced the non-linear action-adventure gameplay seen later in the main series, and what inspired the next game in the franchise, Castlevania II Simon's Quest. Simon's Quest is a direct sequel to the original game and again follows Simon Belmont as he hunts down the five body parts to Dracula, so Simon can fully destroy him once and for all. Castlevania 2 was highly criticised for many various reasons such as an interrupting day and night cycle and overcomplicated puzzles. In 1988, Castlevania received an arcade spin-off named simply Haunted Castle and starred once again Simon Belmont. As Castlevania's popularity rose, it saw entries on more platforms such as the next game, Castlevania The Adventure, exclusive to the original Game Boy. This time around you play as one of Simon's ancestors named Christopher Belmont and retrace his steps to take down Dracula. In 1989, Castlevania III Dracula's Curse released to amazing reception from critics and fans. Three takes place before the previous two games and even Castlevania The Adventure and follows another Belmont, Trevor Belmont, as he leads a small group of vampire hunters to kill Dracula. A sorceress named Cypher, a pirate named Grant, and Dracula's son Alucard are all playable characters. A year later, Japan received a very bizarre spin-off of the Castlevania series, named Akamego Special Boku Dracula Kun. The game is most likely set in a completely separate universe. You play as Kid Dracula, who awakes from a deep sleep to find a threatening demon, Galamoth, has invaded his land. You must go through the game and defeat Galamoth. In the ending, Transylvania is saved and many famous monsters enter the small town to be Dracula's friend. Castlevania The Adventure may not have been a success with critics, however it was good enough to gain its own sequel, Castlevania II Belmont's Revenge, also released to the Game Boy. Much like the first game, you control Christopher Belmont as he confronts Dracula yet again. The first Castlevania was a major success and so Konami thought it right to remaster it on the then super powerful Super Nintendo, naming the remake Super Castlevania 4. It was a major success for the franchise, having slicker combat, improved graphics and a great difficulty system. Japan's interesting spin-off game managed to get a sequel named simply Kid Dracula on the Game Boy in 1993. Galamor from the first game has returned and it's up to you to stop him once again.
1993, the original Castlevania was once again remade, this time for the X68000, and was released exclusively in Japan, simply named Akamego Dracula. The PC Engine received the next instalment, Castlevania Rondo of Blood. It takes place in the 1700s as you play as newcomer Richter Belmont on his quest to take down Dracula. 1994 saw Castlevania make its first jump onto a Sega console with Castlevania Bloodlines. It was an instant hit and was widely praised by critics. The game takes place during the First World War, after Dracula has long been destroyed. The First World War was orchestrated by Dracula's niece, Elizabeth Bartley, who plans to resurrect the long-dead Vampire Lord. Playing as newcomer John, you'll hunt down the new villain through many unique and interesting locations. With the critical success of Castlevania Rondo of Blood on the PC Engine, it was later remade worldwide on the Super Nintendo named Castlevania Dracula X. It featured redesigned levels and altered gameplay elements, but was overall more successful. Castlevania soon made the leap onto the then brand new ultra powerful Sony PlayStation, with a direct sequel to Rondo of Blood, Castlevania Symphony of the Night, released in 1997, and by many is crowned as not just one of the best Castlevania games, but one of the best games ever made. In Symphony of the Night you play as Dracula's son Alucard, as you attempt to destroy his father's castle after Dracula's death in Rondo of Blood. However, when Dracula's servant death strips you of your powers, you begin to find that everything isn't as it seems, and those who were once allies are now enemies. If you haven't played it already, Symphony of the Night is available for purchase on Xbox Live Arcade, PlayStation 3 and PlayStation Vita. <laughs> With the original Game Boy almost out of the picture, Konami settled with one more release on the system, Castlevania Legends. You play a Sonia Belmont in the year 1450 as she hunts down Dracula. Castlevania made its first transition into 3D, starting with a standalone game simply named Castlevania on the Nintendo 64. You have two characters to choose from in the game, and the story is your typical hunt down Dracula quest. The game was widely praised at the time by critics as being a good 3D entry in the series, and faithfully captured the core elements of the franchise. This quickly led to a sequel to the game which released the same year, Castlevania Legacy of Darkness. Also being a Nintendo 64 exclusive, this game highly suffered from the same problems of the first game, like troublesome camera, and while it introduced a new werewolf mode, many critics felt it wasn't enough to stop the game from being average at best. Castlevania quickly appeared on the Game Boy Advance in 2001, with the next main instalment in the franchise, Castlevania Circle of the Moon. In Circle of the Moon you play as Nathan Graves as he fights through a creepy old castle to save his former mentor. It introduced a few RPG styled features and overall 
was a huge success, being titled as one of the best Castlevania games. One of the later games in the PS1's lifetime, Castlevania Chronicles is a port of the X68000 Japanese exclusive Akamego Dracula, which itself was a remaster of the first Castlevania. This PS1 version was available outside of Japan. The success of Circle of the Moon saw a follow-up also released exclusively on the Game Boy Advance, named Castlevania Harmony of Dissonance. It follows new Belmont member Justy Belmont and takes place long after Simon Belmont's adventures. The game was intended to be very similar to Symphony of the Night. It wasn't a massively praised game with criticism pointing towards its boss fights and soundtrack. Konami Collector series Castlevania and Contra is a compilation game which included Castlevania 1, 2 and 3 alongside two Contra games. It was available only for PC. Konami's next Castlevania installment went into the future. Castlevania Aria of Sorrow, exclusive for the Game Boy Advance, is set in the year 2035 and follows teenager Soma Cruz. No longer playing as a Belmont, this new protagonist introduced a new mechanic in the franchise, named Tactical Soul, in which you could absorb enemies' souls to gain additional abilities. It received critical acclaim and for many is the best game in the franchise. With Sony's PlayStation 2 out, Konami soon began work on the next 3D instalment, Castlevania Lament of Innocence. It was released in 2003, exclusive to the PlayStation 2. This game acts as technically the first Castlevania game in chronological order. Taking place in 1094, it tells the origins of the conflict between the Belmont clan and Dracula. The original Castlevania was once again remade in 2004, this time for the Game Boy Advance under the classic NES series. With a massive success like Aria of Sorrow, it only makes sense to create a direct sequel, Castlevania Dawn of Sorrow, released exclusively on the Nintendo DS and again followed Soma Cruz. It introduces new mechanics that utilise the DS stylus and was considered one of the best games for the handheld in 2005. That same year, Konami also released the next 3D instalment, Castlevania Curse of Darkness, which saw an appearance on the PS2 and Xbox, making it the first Castlevania game on the Xbox line of consoles. Curse of Darkness takes place after Castlevania 3 and has you playing as newcomer Hector and Trevor Belmont. The game uses a more complex castle design, more similar to Symphony of the Night. However, criticism head towards the environment and atmosphere. Curse of Darkness didn't sell exceptionally well, nor was critically acclaimed. On the other hand, Castlevania games seem to be doing well on the handhelds. And just to remind everyone of their greatness, Konami released the Castlevania Double Pack, which was a compilation of Castlevania Harmony of Dissonance and Castlevania Aria of Sorrow. The 1988 Castlevania arcade game Haunted Castle received a port to the PlayStation 2 in 2006, exclusive in Japan.
With the console Castlevania games declining, Konami went back to the handheld, releasing Castlevania Portrait of Ruin for the DS in 2006. It is a sequel to Castlevania Bloodlines on the Mega Drive and takes place during World War II. It would be the first Castlevania to feature a co-op mode and English voiceovers. Portrait of Ruin received a positive response from critics with some calling it one of the best DS games of 2006. <laughs> Castlevania went full mobile in 2007 with Castlevania Order of Shadows. It centred around Desmond Belmont as he searches Dracula's castle for The Order. It wasn't a very successful game, with critics calling it far too easy and short. Making its first appearance on the PSP, Castlevania Dracula X Chronicles is a compilation game featuring a 2.5D remake of Castlevania Rondo of Blood and a port of Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Dracula X Chronicles was popular enough to game its own medal slot machine named Akumego Dracula the Medal. The next main instalment in the long running franchise is a sequel to Dracula X Chronicles, taking place after Symphony of the Night. Castlevania Order of Ecclesia stars Shanoa, who is a member of an organisation who plan to destroy Dracula. It was the final Castlevania game to see a release on the Nintendo DS, and didn't disappoint, having high praises from many critics. It would also be the last main instalment in the franchise before the reboot. Making its first mark on the Nintendo Wii, Castlevania Judgment is also the first fighting game in the franchise. It centres around Galamoth from the Kid Dracula series, sending his servant to kill Dracula. However, heroes from the Castlevania universe get pulled into one time period in order to stop it. There are 14 playable fighters, Unfortunately, the reception of Castlevania Judgment was highly negative, with complaints to the controls and camera. Know the might of legend. The Castlevania series was spiralling, releasing fewer hits and more slot machines. Patchy slot Akamego Dracula released in Japan in 2009 and is based on Castlevania Curse of Darkness. Staying within arcades, Castlevania The Arcade would be the first light gun shooter in the series and playing much similar to Sega's House of the Dead. Castlevania The Adventure Rebirth was a Wii exclusive remake of the original Game Boy Castlevania The Adventure. That same year Castlevania received another mobile game named Castlevania Puzzle Encore of the Night. It retells the story from Symphony of the Night but in puzzle form. Castlevania's Patchy Slot game gained a sequel named Patchy Slot Akamego Dracula 2, which was based on Castlevania Lament of Innocence and again only saw a release in Japan. The final Castlevania game before the franchise's reboot was Castlevania Harmony of Despair, which released digitally only on Xbox Live Arcade and PlayStation 3. The game was mainly advertised as a multiplayer game. You choose a certain Castlevania character and help each other find certain items in various rooms and defeat the level boss. 
It also features a versus mode. Castlevania was soon declining and Konami knew it best to reboot the aged franchise, starting with Castlevania Lords of Shadow in 2010, releasing it for the PlayStation 3, Xbox 360 and later PC. Lords of Shadow was a drastic change from the other games, having a completely new mythos and becoming a more traditional hack and slash action game in the same vein as God of War and Devil May Cry. It sold well and was critically successful, however some fans disliked the change in the series. The slot machine games kept coming with patchy slot Akamego Dracula 3. Castlevania Lords of Shadow was successful and so the 3DS received a direct sequel subtitled Mirror of Fate. This entry took on a more familiar Castlevania style, being 2.5D and having more adventure elements than the previous Lords of Shadow game. The game was fairly successful on the 3DS, which caused the game to get a HD remaster on PC, Xbox Live Arcade and the PlayStation Store. Castlevania Lords of Shadow 2 is a sequel to the 2010 reboot and continues Gabriel Belmont's story who is now a weakened Dracula. This latest entry in the series received mixed reception from both critics and fans. Some enjoyed the fast fluid combat, however others disliked the visual aesthetic and poor pacing. Unfortunately, besides another Japanese-only release slot machine, Lords of Shadow 2 would be the latest entry in the Castlevania series so far. However, just this year released the Castlevania web television series, which had been in development since 2007. The series featured four animated episodes, with the plot being based on Castlevania 3 in particular. The short series has been enjoyed by many and even gained a lot of praise from critics with a 90% on Rotten Tomatoes. Castlevania has been renewed for a second season. Castlevania has been majorly successful and definitely one of Konami's greatest series. With the success of Lords of Shadow and the recent Netflix series, Hopefully there'll be a good future for the franchise. If you enjoyed this style of video then leave a like and don't forget to share this with all your friends. And until next time, I'll see you there. If you have any suggestions for another visual history then leave them in the comments below.